the outcome of superconsciousness. Intuition, the outcome of superconsciousness. This is an excerpt from Wisdom from Sands of Eternity. Wisdom from Sands of Intuition, the outcome of superconsciousness. There are two words, instinct and intuition. And often these words are mixed up with one another. Instinct is in the power of unconscious nature. And intuition is the outcome of superconscious universe. One is the outcome of unconsciousness and the other is the outcome of superconsciousness. Therefore, these two words cannot be mixed with one another. Intuition evolves out of consciousness that surrounds the whole universe. The oceanic consciousness of which we are just a small island or better ice fields because we can merge or dissolve or melt into it and become one with the ocean. If we are an island, an island cannot merge with the ocean. It will maintain such identity. It may submerge into the ocean, but yet still it will have its identity. Whereas ice world can melt and lose its significance and become ultimately the part of the ocean. So intuition evolves out of consciousness that surrounds the whole universe, the oceanic consciousness of which we are just an iceberg because as an iceberg we can merge, dissolve or melt into it and become one with the ocean. Such should be the nature of the ego any moment. It can merge, dissolve and melt to become one with the oceanic consciousness. Intuition is receiving inputs and ideas without knowing exactly how and where you point them. You simply know it is not from you. Like creativity, intuitiveness and inspiration often happens when someone is virtually merging an activity. When one is highly focused on a respective activity and there is a state of tremendous joy and fulfillment. In that state of joy and fulfillment, you are suddenly connected to something which is not you. It is the outcome of merging in the ocean of the being. Intuition can be trained and in its highest level, it leads to conscious contact with the non incarnate beings. A process usually called chanting. Then it becomes parampara or tarikat parampara according to the Hindu way and tarikat along according to the tarikat or nisbat according to the Sufis. It is in Christian terminology, the word is used as communion. It is indeed heart to heart communion. 
when you are connected. For instance, there is a hierarchy in your office, in your workplace. If there is harmony among all the people, then all the written words of the people who are in your team, their work is easily accessible to you. Because someone does the work that it filters to the person that they do alone. There is an interconnectivity between the lower one of the ladder and the high. They are not separate that you put the top ladder separately and the lower ladder separately. The ladder simply means all these steps are connected together. Something like this, we can call it parampara or nisbat or tarikat or communion. Each step of the ladder is in communion with the other. And that is why you can reach to the top. Otherwise, if there is a discontinuity, then you cannot reach. So when you are connected to a particular or the way or the system, then you know the books of all the masters. You need not go into the written books. Instead, intuitively, you are in harmony with all the books. You are in all these steps, you can put your foot on the first level. First step, it will lead you to the second. It's not that they first will lead you to the last. There is a proper sequence. First will lead to the second, second will lead to the third and fourth. This is how, if you are connected to the current master, that current master is connected to the, the one immediately preceding him and that's how the entire the ladder is formed and through the ladder we can reach the ultimate of your consciousness when you look at various psycho centers all are interconnected you cannot skip one for the other if you do that there may be a problem related. In the process of the spiritual growth, the journey to all these psychocentrals is essential. If you overlook the sex center and you go to the emotions, then emotions play a devil's role. You must Clarify, sanctify your lower emotions, then you can read to the higher emotions. It is the negative emotions, when they are harmonized, it merges with the positive, then you go to the positive emotions, then you go one day beyond those emotions. Just yesterday someone told me, the person has written an article for Gita Dhyan Sadhana Journal, but he said that he do not want his ego to come in place, so he don't want his name to be there. Who is that wants his name and who is that who does not want the name? It is the same entity. When ego is wounded, you say that you do whatever you want to do, I'm just walking out of that. When ego is pleased, it acts in a different way. But both are the aspects of ego. 
that entity which is false in you. So the lower and the higher emotions are like that. So I have to tell the person to have your name and to not your to not have your name. Both are the aspects of ego. Beyond ego, it does not matter whether your name goes or not. You have a name. This is how all these stages we have to go through. Then they will reach. Only then the spiritual journey is possible. If the lower emotions are not clear and you do not have any opportunity to fall or falter, your path is open. Okay. As soon as the opportunity comes, you fall from the level. There is a Zen example, a Zen quote, because Zen had used these small insights into the human life. A, a woman was taking care of a Zen monk, a young Zen monk. The woman herself was a master. So in order to know whether the person has progress or not, one day she encouraged a young girl to go to the mom and give him a embrace and report her what he sees. Now, if you are traditional, you will say there is a I cannot embrace you, I am a master, I am a saint, I cannot embrace you. This is... Whether you embrace a person or not embrace a person, it does not matter and it does not affect your consciousness. So the, the girl goes to the master and embraces him, there was a reaction in this monk. The woman was watching it and threw, her, threw him out of the monastery. He said, at least you can show compassion to your sleepers. You know your way is not the way of this life of involvement, but you can show at least compassion towards the person. This is where when the progress happens haphazardly, then situations like this happen. And then you are connected in this way to the entire chain of mercy. The word intuition is beautiful. You know the other word tuition. Tuition means somebody else is giving it to you. That is what tuition is. And intuition, it comes from the two words in and tuition. When the inner gives you the tuition, the unknown and unknown gives you the tuition, it, then it becomes intuition. So indeed, intuition means nobody is giving it to you. You cannot define unknown and unknown simply you say, you can say this is unknown and unknown. Suddenly, it happened to you. Instead, it is a growth a growing within your inner silence. When there is a silence within you, it is overflowing, it is pulsating, it is springing forth. Then out of that, something grows, something is born in you, and that is it.
And because it is not given to you by somebody else, it cannot be put into words. The still mind wants to know what intuition is. Intuition is in something like instinct. In other ways, absolutely unlike instinct. In some ways, it is like intellect. While in other ways, intuition is absolutely against intent. So you will have to understand because it is the subtlest thing in you. And that is why it becomes very difficult to decipher what intuition is. One moment it is like instinct, next moment it is not instinct. One moment it feels like intellect. Next moment it is not like internet, then what is it? It is the subtlest thing in you. Intuition is like instinct because you cannot do anything about it. This is the only similarity between the intuition and instinct is. Instinct, there is something that you cannot know about. You cannot define it. Intuition is like instinct because you cannot do anything about it. It is part of your consciousness just as instinct is part of your body. Instinct is part of your body and intellect and intuition is the part of your consciousness. So you cannot do anything about it. You cannot do anything about your instinct. So too, you cannot do anything about your intuition. But just as you can allow your instinct to be fulfilled, you can also allow and give total freedom to your intuition to be fulfilled. And you will be surprised at what kind of powers you have been carrying within you. Unless you go through the process of intuition, you will not know your inner treasures. Intuition can give you answers for ultimate questions, not verbally, but existentially. You need not ask what truth is. Now there is this similarity between instinct and intuition. In the middle comes intellect. Instinct is deaf. Intellect will hear but it can only finish the promise. The three stages. Instinct, it is deaf. Intellect will hear it but it can only philosophize. Intellect goes on philosophizing. This is why we have to do it intellectuals. They live in their own world of philosophizing. Intellect is blind. Instinct is deaf. Intellect is blind. Therefore, it cannot see. And intuition is the seer. Not seen, the seer, it has eyes, it sees the truth. Therefore, there is no question of thinking about it. It is the seer, that faculty that sees them. Both instinct and instinct and intuition are independent of you. One is the outcome of unconscious. The other is the outcome of superconscious. Instinct lies in the power of nature, the unconscious nature of the being. And intuition is in the hands of superconscious universe. The consciousness that surrounds the whole universe, the oceanic consciousness, of which we are just a small iceberg. Because then we can melt 
intuit and become one with it and become ocean. This is the meaning of the word show. Show in the word Tao show. Tao that which is. Show the iceberg as words into the ocean. Tao does not exist as an island, instead it exists like an iceberg in the ocean and as the sunlight falls, the iceberg begins to melt and then it merges with the ocean. Tao that was once existed as an iceberg has totally melted and merged into the ocean and has become ocean. And when something, the ice moon merges, melts and merges with the ocean, it becomes ocean, then the enlightenment happens. You have attained the Buddha. In some ways, intuition is exactly opposite to instinct. Instinct always leads you to the other. You have certain instincts, you move to the other. The fulfillment is always dependent on something other than you. Intuition leads you only to yourself, it has no dependence, there is no need for the other, hence there is beauty in the intuition, there is freedom and in independence too. Intuition is an exalted state that needs nothing, it is so full of itself that there is no space for anything else. You are total, you are fulfilled unto yourself. In some way, intuition is like intellect because it is not intelligence. For Buddha, intuition means an egoist trust. For Buddha, intuition means an egoless trust. One who trusts in the whole existence also trusts in himself because he is part of the whole. He listens to his heart's voice and follows it. And after he goes with his heart, he trusts in intuition. And once you have known the art of how to listen to your intuition, you will be surprised. Intellect can err and stumble. However, intuition is infallible, it never errs. But we need to know the distinction between intuition, intellect and instinct. It always directs you in the right course of action. Intuition is the highest rung of the ladder of consciousness. It can divide into three divisions. The lower or the first is instinct. The second or the middle one is intellect. And finally the third, the highest one is intuition. Instinct, intellect and intuition. The Western mind represents the male mind, the aggressive intellect. The Eastern man represents the family mind. It is, it represents intuition. This is not a watertight classification.
there are people in the East who are aggressive and remain open. There are people in the West who are feminine, mind, or intuitive. East and West are not just arbitrary. This division is very significant and profound as well. If you choose according to your inclinations and according to your own intuition, and this is very strong in the children, but slowly and slowly it deepens. The voice of the parents, the voice of the teachers, the society, and the peace becomes louder and effective. Now if you want to find out what is your own voice, you will have to pass through a crowd of noises. Like a noise, the exist. Unless you have found your natural inclination, your life is going to remain a tragedy. And life will move from cradle, cradle to cradle. Only blissful ones have lived according to their own intuition and have rebelled against any effort by others to impose their ideas. Only blissful ones have lived according to their own intuition and have rebelled against any effort by others to impose their ideas. Howsoever valuable those ideas may be, they are useless because they are not yours. The only significant idea is that which arises in you, grows in you and then blossoms in you. It is natural, spontaneous, and not like plastic flowers. Plastic flower may last for long, but there is no fragileness, there is no aliveness, there is no beauty in it. Just the energy touching your higher level of consciousness, the super consciousness, a simple touch and there is a shower of joy that continues. The flowers continue to shower. Slowly and slowly energy goes on eating and makes its way to the center of the super consciousness. The inward journey continues. You have nothing to do. Your work is finished when you have stopped repressing and your unconscious is cleansed. Your work is finished. Then you have nothing to do. Everything has to be done by your energy. When the lower emotions are clear, it gives way to the higher. When the higher emotions are clear, you have nothing to do. Everything has to be done by your energy. The kind of energy you carry around you, that will direct you to the right place. It will direct you to the to your spouse and out of your friend one day you will discover the spouse. Out of the energy that has now taken birth in you will direct you to the master, will clear your way 
because it is your integrated energy which is guiding your steps. And this is why the insights of the Masters clears your way. It becomes like a beacon light. As you move one step to the other from unknown sources, things will start flowing in, flowing to us. Someone comes and gives this assistance, that one comes and gives this assistance, and your path is clear. Because once you have stopped repressing, your unconsciousness is cleansed, then you have nothing to do. Everything has to be done by your energy field that you can get on. The energy field that you carry around, you can allow that to flow into that energy field. This is what happens when someone asks a question to the Master. Master allows you, clears your way, you have created an intense desire to come within the energy field of the Master by inquiring his insights into a particular subject matter. The light comes and your path gets lighted. You would have seen sometimes it happens when you are even in the plane it is said that in an event of an emergency the corridor lights will light and that light will guide you to the next exit. When you are in the in a function there and you have to go to receive an award, there is darkness all around you. The light is very dim. Only the passage through which between the two eyes you have to walk that is lighted and light continues to lead you lead you to the moon. This is a creative light. Light follows your steps and in that only you are visible. Be. To you, your path is visible. To others, you are visible. The people sitting in the two sides of the aisles, they see you clearly. Who is this person going to receive this award, receive this recognition? The light follows. You follow the light and reach to the podium. The people on the two sides see you walking through the light. And everything is being done by the energy. And when you reach the center, a new faculty starts functioning in you. And that faculty is intuition. When you have stopped repressing and your unconsciousness is cleansed, then you have nothing to do. Everything has to be done by your energy. And when you reach the center, a new faculty starts functioning in you, which is your intuition. Instinct is at the center of unconsciousness. Intellect is in the center of the conscious and intuition is in the center of superconscious. One is below the zero axis of the graph, the unconscious is the 
layer below the zero axis. When you plot a graph on a piece of paper with a horizontal axis, which is known as x-axis, and then there, there is a vertical axis, which is known as y-axis. The y-axis is horizontal and it goes below the x-axis also when we go into 360 degree plane. Then the x-axis extends to the left side of the horizontal line and that is known as minus x and that which is to the right side of the, the point where the coordinates are 0, 0. The coordinates in according to calculus or the algebra, the center has the coordinates 0, 0. That is the P. When you go below that, you are going minus y, y axis. Instead of going upward, you are going downward. And that's where unconsciousness is. And then there are other layers of it. Your individual unconsciousness, then collective unconsciousness. Simple words, you are stupid, you will have the company of the students. And a, stu a stupid person cannot have a wise company. He will associate with people who are of the same nature and when you are going ever in light then you are moving in the that upward direction of the mind the x-axis where the y of coordinate is zero and x coordinate is positive 0, plus 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, you are moving along the x-axis. The y-coordinates remain 0, x-coordinate remains moving, you are swinging. This is conscious. You are moving on the surface. Then you are moving upward. Where x coordinate coordinate remains the same, y coordinate changes. You are moving upward. This is superconsciousness. Then the cosmic superconscious, collective superconsciousness, and then cosmic superconsciousness. This is why Chacha Ji used to say, Sufi Rabbar there that man is a seven-story building. Seven-story building based on these layers of consciousness. Instinct is at the center of unconscious. Intellect is at the center of conscious. And intuition is at the center of superconscious. Intuition functions in a quantum meaning. When you bring an unlit candle in the company of a lit candle, how close you have to be in order to have the lit candle like the unlit candle or the unlit candle get lit. You have to bring it close. How close you cannot be There is no criteria. It will depend on many things. 
it will depend on the outer atmosphere if there is too much breeze too much outside influence then you have to almost but you cannot overlap the unlit candle the flame the unlit flame of the candle or to the lit flame because then it will be extinguished you have to because there is an external influence and based on that you will determine the it will be determined not by you but it will be automatically determined how close it has to come to the lit one only then and can you see how is it a slow process it is a gradual uh, process no it happens like a quantum leap something jumps from the lit candle and lights the unlit and then the two are lit so intuition is like a quantum leap it has no methodological process the quantum it is quantum leap because there is no methodological process when mahavir became enlightened the story goes on mahavir has read mahavir the person who has who was contemplating of gautam buddha and he propounded a religion that came to be known as jain religion J A I N Jain, not Z, which is the outcome of Buddha. He has relinquished. He belonged to a royal lineage. He had abandoned everything. He had simply a piece of cloth to wrap around him. and then a certain portion to cover his upper limbs he was walking through bushes all of a sudden someone came and asked a person asked that he needs some cloth So Mahavi thought there is no need to have the whole cloth. The half of that can be used to cover my lower part of the body. The upper can remain exposed. So he cut out half of the part of the cloth that he has used to wrap around him and gave the person the other half. he used the half to cover his lower limbs and he was walking through the bushes it just happened that the piece of the cloth that he was using as a wrap got put on to the neighboring bushes and in the thorns and as he moved forward the cloth unwrapped and went Mahavir got enlightened. He attained to innocence. He became spontaneous. It was not a gradual process. It happened to him spontaneously. Whereas now Jain monks, they practice. They practice to be mute. First, they take out. out of those then they will walk in the privacy of their room in their undergarments then slowly and slowly they will walk in their undergarments outside then they will remove even the undergarments and walk inside in the privacy and then finally when they have gathered the courage they will come out this is a gradual process what has happened to 
Mahabir was spontaneous. Spontaneous. It just happened. He was not thinking of it. He was not contemplating. He was not manipulating that state of innocence. It happens on to be spontaneous. Whereas the Jain followers who go through the calculated steps, a methodology, a procedure to attain to that state and in that they, their awareness remains lasting. There is no spontaneity, spontaneity. there is no innocence. In there is a kind of convenience. Intuition functions in a quantum being. It has no methodological process. Intuition simply sees things. It has eyes to see. It sees things which you have never been, never even thought of as things, for example, love. You have never thought of it as a thing. Man of intuition can see whether there is love in you or not. Whether there is trust in you or not. Whether there is doubt in you or not. He can see them as if these are things. In inward journey, intuition holds the highest place. An unclean, unconscious, always hinders you. Clean it just as if the mirror has dust onto its surface. It will hinder the reflection of the image. And the way to clean it is to satisfy it. So much that it starts asking you, please stop. It is no more than I need it. Only leave it there. And with that your intellect is filled with such a fresh flow of energy that it turns into intelligence. Then the energy goes on rising and opens the door for intuition. Intellect has to become because you have cleansed the surface of the air, cleansed the surface of your mind. Then intellect becomes intelligence. And then when it and then it begins to rise. And the energy goes on rising and opens the door for intuition. Then you can see things which are not visible to your physical eyes. Things which are not even things. Love is not a thing. Trust is not a thing. Trust is not a thing. Certainly they are real, much more real than your things. But they are real only for intuition. They are existential. And once your intuition starts functioning, you are for the first time really a man. With the unconscious you remain animal. This is why instinct is called animal instinct. With the conscious you are no more animal. And lastly with the superconscious you are a man. First you are an animal in the first state. Then you are no more an animal. And then finally you are a man. Just as body has its own wisdom called instinct, soul has its own wisdom called intuition. Instinct is the wisdom of the body, intuition is the wisdom of the being of the soul. Your mind is borrowed, so it has no wisdom. It has nothing like instinct or intuition. Body has instinct, soul has intuition, mind has nothing. It is just like a computer that goes on collecting all kinds of information as rubbish. But it has trans, but it has 
tremendous power over you, minus tremendous power over you, because it has all that you need. If it is erased, you will simply be dumb. That is what happens sometimes to the people. They have prepared their speech for the occasion. They have written it. Suddenly, when they reach the podium, they found that they are, when they put their hand in the pocket, they found that the paper is missing. They attain to the state of a blank. They said, I got completely blank. Not even a word could utter unto me. I just got blank. What happens? The mind has tremendous power over you because it knows all that. If it is erased, you will simply be dumb blank. Not knowing who you are, where are you going? And when something from the unknown comes to be known, it is always a jump. It is a jump. It is a quantum leap. There is no interlink, no passage. And there is no going from one point to another point. But it seems almost inconceivable. Certainly you can feel, but you cannot understand. When I say such thing, I know very well that it is nonsense. However, it only means that which cannot be understood by our senses. The eyes, the ears, the all the five sense organs, the organs of perception and five organs of action and the mind being the sixth of Remember mind is a sense, the most subtle and wisdom too is a sense. Intuition is possible because of unknown things. One has to follow his own instincts. Instead, these two words, instinct and intuition have to be understood. Instinct is unconscious nature, intuition is constant, conscious nature. First your instinct has to be freed from the fabrics of principles, dogmas, right and wrong, morality and immorality. And when instinct is completely natural, it has tremendous beauty. That is the beauty you see in the animals. A deer just jumping and running has a certain beauty which man has lost. His jumping and running has a grace that comes from instincts. It is he is not jumping and running because it is not running and jumping. It is the nature jumping and running through him. He is just instrumental. And when this happens, the ego has vanished completely. You are simply a fluke. When the life force is blown into it, a melody emerges of this. Man has lost his spontaneity when nature manifests through him. This is the first step towards the ultimate freedom. That your instinct should be allowed on both possible and alongside you, you should continue to meditate because meditation is not a program. Meditation is just a method of becoming aware of what is happening to you. No disturbance, no judgment, just watching what is happening in you. Not around you, in you. If you go on watching your instincts and they are broke, a moment comes when your instincts start changing into intuition. The word is very simple. 
we are given a tuition every day. That a tuition is to replace. We are given tuition every day. The word intuition is significant. We are given tuition every day. That tuition is to repress your intuition. In schools and colleges, in universities, you are given tuition. It means something from outside being forced upon you, and intuition means something coming from your innermost core. Something emanating, springing forth from the deepest core of you. If you are unconscious, then it will remain instinct. If you are conscious, then instinct plus awareness equals intuition, the equation. Instinct plus awareness equals to intuition. Then for the first time you have discovered your master within you. then you don't need the outside master. Indeed, intuition is your master and your real university or the institution of learning. With intuition development, you do not need any scripture or any kind. You are the light on yourself. Your inner light is enough to lead you guide you to the ultimate goal of the light. In the beginning the light is a step, it is dim, it is flickering, and it continues to be Continued the wavering of the light ceases and then it becomes a greater light and then it shines wherever you are like a thousand suns. In the beginning the light is unsteady and it continues to flicker. Continue the wavering of the light ceases and then it becomes a greater light and then it shines wherever you are like a thousand suns. Then it shines wherever you are Whatever you do, like a thousand suns. What else to say? Let the silence go. Let the silence that you have experienced and challenge you in the moments of this communion, the silence that has enchanted you, the silence that you have experienced, let it enchant your life, your living, and in process of That is all. That is all for. Me.